This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hi, I'm Scott the Miniature Maniac and I have participated in this hobby for over 17 years and I have never played in a gaming tournament in my life. I threw out a little survey to see if I wasn't alone in that statistic and based on that data, some of you are in a similar boat. Over half of the audience members have never participated in a tournament ever. Let's change that for you and me. What up, mini family? I get a lot of painting questions, and one that I get pretty often goes a little like this. I want to paint my space marines like Hello Kitty marines, but if I do that, can I not play in a tournament? I answer this question differently every single time, but whenever I do, it goes a little like this. What are the odds you're ever actually gonna play in a tournament? Is this a concern you need to have? That all changes today. As some of you know, I've been getting into a new miniature war game that they called A Song of Ice and Fire. In a little under two months, I've played over 20 games. That's more miniature war games than I've played in over a decade of any system. I've even done two gaming focused streams and if you wanna catch one of these, make sure to follow me on Twitch, link in the description. Because of my recent burst of interest, I felt like maybe I could try stepping into unfamiliar territory. Okay, so I was browsing Facebook, minding my own business, avoiding work as per usual, and I stumbled upon a local tournament for A Song of Ice and Fire. I think if I were to do this, I need to rope in some friends. Something to know about me going into an event like this is I like to describe myself as a casual tryhard. Whenever I do pretty much anything, I like to make sure that I'm doing it as best as I can with however much time I have available. I want to have fun, but I'm never going to play a game, for instance, exclusively for fun. I'm always trying to do my best. With that in mind, I wanted to have some ducks in a row. In A Song of Ice and Fire, there are some pretty strong lists, often referred to as net lists. These are specific configurations of certain armies that are very strong right now. They're called net lists because they're often constructed and shared on the internet and copied and pasted into your local game stores because like any disease, it spreads. Among those illnesses, you have Mother of Dragons from Targaryens, Red Cloak Spam from Lannisters, and Builders and Crossbows from Night's Watch. The concept of net lists applies to all sorts of games for what it's worth. With my two lists, I wanted to address a couple of these stronger situations in case I ran into them because again, I'm a try hard deep down. Fortunately for me, this tournament didn't require the armies to be fully painted, so I didn't have a mad scramble to get my army painted, which is a common occurrence amongst tournament goers. The day of the tournament was approaching and I felt like I should make it just a little bit more challenging. So the night before the tournament, John and I shot another episode of Drunk Mini Painting and I vomited twice. No! <laughs> <laughs> Despite waking up and feeling like I had drunk half a liter of liquid resin, I decided to press on. We are on our way, me and Curtis, hey. to our first ever gaming tournament. Despite always wanting to perform, we might have been a little underprepared. Just to give you a sense of the level of prep that we go through for these tournaments, I am sleeving Curtis's cards right now <laughs> as we drive to the event. <laughs> Since you mentioned that, <laughs> I have two neutral boxes in the back of the car that aren't even open yet. <laughs> <laughs> but imagine rolling up to a tournament and your opponent's unboxing models and <laughs> sleeving cards. And we're like five minutes late. We're totally gonna win, right? I mean, undoubtedly. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless, I was able to get Curtis's cards sleeved and we showed up at the event kind of on time. We have arrived. The store was really nice and had a great variety of products ranging from board games to Warhammer to Flames of War, Malifaux, and more. The first thing we had to do was write down our two lists on the official tournament rosters that also tracked our results each round, and then we got right into the games. My first game was against a neutral player, a faction that's not very competitive. Despite that, I could sense that my opponent was a pretty capable player. I made one key mistake which cost me a lot of early game momentum. I felt like I was getting a little bit stomped, but I made a bit of a comeback toward the later rounds, making me feel like I wasn't a total noob. I lost with a score of a six to 11 VPs with my Greyjoy, but it was a good game and I was seeking some vengeance. Before that, however, let's hear a brief word from our sponsor, Squarespace. Mini painting is a confusing hobby to a lot of my relatives. And with an online gallery like the one that I made on Squarespace's platform, I'm able to easily show my aunt Gladys what it is I do exactly with these plastic toy soldiers. 
Personally, I'm all about finding the biggest bang for the littlest buck. In the case of making videos, it's how I make the highest quality product with the lowest time invested. Squarespace gets you the highest quality website with the lowest time investment, leveraging their awesome templates. Maybe you don't need an online gallery, but prefer to write your battle reports on a slick website. Maybe those bat reps are restricted to paying audience members, which you can implement with Squarespace's members area. Whatever your idea, head to squarespace.com slash miniac to save 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain using the code MINIAC. All right, now back to the tournament. Moving on to round two, I played against a Stark player who seemed like a newer guy. This game saw the Greyjoys absolutely take off. My dice were a little too hot to handle. I was able to manage a crushing victory, which isn't me being a dick. It's the kind of victory one gets based on the spread of victory points, which was 10 to four. I felt energized. I felt unencumbered by making mistakes. My strategy was good. My card drawing was good. Everything was working out how it was supposed to in my head. So bring on round three. The third round was a buy for me, so on paper it was a victory. Because there were an odd amount of players, someone was sitting out each round. And that was my tournament experience. Preferably I would have played, but I got to experience something that I haven't experienced since I was a kid. I got to sit in an LGS and just hang out and watch people play games. When I was little, I used to get dropped off at Games Workshop for as long as the store was open and I pity the employees. And I just did whatever. I painted, I played games, I watched games, I did it all. And for the first time in a while, I had nowhere to be, so I just bought a Coke and some Cheez-Its and watched some song, and it felt awesome. All right, tournament's over, Curtis placed. Second place, baby. I placed third place, but really we're both first place because we have Cold Stone in this bag and we have pizza impending. Based on our placements, we also got a few rewards from the store as well. The experience was so much fun. There wasn't a single person running a net list. Everyone was there having fun and playing with what they were passionate about. I know for me and likely some of the mini family, the idea of a gaming tournament comes with a lot of mental baggage. You might think the event will be filled with sweaty nerds, a lack of deodorant and butt cracks everywhere. And while that might be true for some gaming events, my tiny five person tournament was very relaxed. Can I guarantee that for every event you and I might go to in the future, it'll be like this? Absolutely not, but you can get a feeling for what it's going to be like. My event was at a smaller store and I could tell that the event was smaller as well based on the interest on Facebook. Just based on that information alone, I knew it would likely be less competitive because people who are interested in a crunchier experience are going to seek out those larger events. Additionally, because A Song of Ice and Fire is a smaller game, the crowd isn't as seasoned as in a game that's been around for longer. It's obvious in hindsight, but there are a wide range of events catered to different people. Holy Havoc, an Age of Sigmar tournament in the Midwest, is designed for a more thematic, story-driven crowd, whereas a grand tournament is for more of a competitive crowd. And while I've known about this delineation before, I kind of just didn't believe it would affect my personal experience. If you're like me and you believe that tournaments aren't for you, I'd urge you to reconsider. At least once in your hobby career, you should participate in one of these smaller events. Dip your toes in slowly, if you're unsure like me, with a game you're interested in. You get to meet people who are interested in the game that you're interested in. You get to talk about that game, and now if you ever want to get a pickup game in, you have a larger pool of people that you are aware of. To get some more variety, I've also asked Curtis to share his tournament experience in this video. Hi, my name is Curtis, and I went to the Song of Ice and Fire tournament at Dreamers Vault with Scott. I was playing House Targaryen, uh, I went in with two lists prepared the night before I was actually scrambling to come up with my final list and I ended up having to go to my local game store early in the morning before the tournament started just to get some new units. That was kind of exciting. Um, I actually went into the tournament feeling very confident. Uh, I was telling everyone that I was going to come first place and I was so excited to go and uh, steamroll everybody with the two lists that I had brought. Uh, and it's not something that I normally feel. I don't normally feel confident going into something like this. So it felt good to finally feel that way. I wouldn't necessarily need to come in first. You know, I wouldn't be upset if that didn't happen, but it felt good to finally have the confidence going into it. It's not something that uh, I'm normally good at, feeling confident in myself. So when we first got there, there were maybe less people than we expected. 
Uh, but everyone seemed very, very friendly and excited to see us there. You know, new faces, new blood to face against. I will say that the time limit on the rounds made it feel like I was maybe a bit rushed. Maybe I made some mistakes that I wouldn't necessarily have made if I had taken the time to think every single move through. Honestly, everyone that I met there was really, really nice. They were very happy, actually, to see new people at the store playing the game. I expected people to be very sweaty, so to speak. I expected them to be tryhards. I expected lists that were, like, tailored towards getting the most out of every single point. You want to have the, the meta list to be as good as possible, and there are some scary lists in this game that people talk about. It was just a uh, very friendly and fun competition. The vibe was very very relaxed, despite it being a tournament. And I think that made it really enjoyable, actually. Going forward, I'd actually be very excited to play in another tournament. We were discussing planning a future one, and I'm hopeful that at future tournaments, there will be more players, more variety of houses to play against, uh, maybe some more rounds, so that I can even get some more games in. Uh, it was definitely something I want to experience again and I'm really happy that I got to. But despite coming in second and you know wanting to be first, and I was very, very, very happy with my experience and uh, I would not change that. The next A Song of Ice and Fire tournament is on November 6th in Burnville, Minnesota. If you can make it, you definitely should. That's gonna do it for this video, guys. If you remember your first tournament experience, let me know down in the comment section below. If you like the channel and you wanna support it, there are a number of ways that you can do it. You can buy some of my merch. You can buy the model that I make called the Duchess and a digital course along with it that teaches you how to paint the miniature. Brushstroke for brushstroke. You can support me on Patreon. It gets you a lot of fun rewards like a Discord server where you and I can hang out any day of the week and chat about your miniature painting projects or how to draft the perfect dragon hunting list. All things linked down in the description below. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to paint my minis!